Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Louise. I didn't realize this setup. I tried to frame it and it zoomed in with the camera. So it's a little bit tighter, but that's fine. We're going with it. I have put so much thought into these answers. So I put on my Instagram, ask me a question about relationships, confidence, self-care, etc. And I compiled a list of most of the questions. Some of them were kind of the same question. So I merged them into one answer. If you guys don't know, I have a psych degree and I never really use it, but I feel like it's fun to be able to use my psych degree and my past experiences to answer these questions so it brings me a lot of joy and i hope it's helpful to you guys anyway first if you are a cisgender man get out the chat because this is girl talk and we're talking about things that you guys don't get the in on okay so this is this is your cue to leave i'm gonna sage all the energy you left behind Okay. I feel cleansed. All right, we also have a glass of wine. Sauvignon Blanc. So grab your wine. Let's have a little chat. Also, new addition to the family. This is Harlow. I thought he was a pig. He is a wheelchair assisted stallion and he's not gonna judge us, okay? So Harlow. All right, let's jump in. First question. Ooh, we're jumping right in. What red flags do you look for? Number one, if he is condescending. It's one thing to roast someone, but it's a whole nother thing to be like making fun of them and thinking it's funny. Like I used to talk to a guy who would laugh at the fact that I couldn't cook. Like I suck at cooking. I'm trying to get better at it. Like I have been meal prepping and I've been putting in the work, honey. But he used to make fun of the fact that I couldn't cook. And it's supposed to be like a girl's thing to be able to cook. Blast from the past. Anyway, I think that's stupid. Like a guy should never make you feel smaller. And any guy who does that is not welcome in my life. Okay, number two. I'm going to give like five because I just feel like there are so many red flags that are kind of hidden. And like these are a little obvious, but I think they're also just like good to know. He's manipulative and controlling. I can spot this so well now, which I never used to be able to, but now I'm just like, nope, not handling that. If he makes you feel ashamed of posting something or if he gets upset with you when you don't respond to him, he's gotta go. Like he should not feel entitled to your time or entitled to giving his, like he can give his opinion on something, but if it has anything to do with wearing lingerie online, posting in a bikini, or posting anything that emasculates him, he's gotta go. Like, he's not comfortable, he's insecure, and he's gonna take you down with him. Another thing I notice guys doing to be manipulative is they'll say, like, I have a really small circle and I only let certain people in, or if you try to friend zone them, they'll say, oh, I don't want any friends, so, you're good, like, have fun. And then it's like, okay, see you. If you're gonna act like it's such a privilege to be around you, then I don't need to be around you because automatically we're not on an even playing field. Three, he fails to take responsibility. So this is when he blames other people over himself or he blames the situation instead of just taking accountability. There is nothing more frustrating than a man who can't apologize and not apologizing by saying, I'm sorry, what I did upset you because then it puts it on you, right? Like that's still not saying I messed up. Of course you were upset by my actions because I wasn't considering your feelings. So I would much rather have an apology that says, hey, I'm sorry. I should have considered your feelings better and I hope you forgive me. Thank you. Four, he doesn't listen to you or pay attention to your needs. So these are kind of like two separate ones, but they go hand in hand. I went on a date recently and I was so surprised. The guy asked me zero questions about myself or like my home or my family. And I gave him like the alley-oop. Like I was like, yeah, like my dad, you know, was doing this the other day. Like he could have asked what my dad does for a living or just like anything. And he just kept it pushing. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I, I'm gonna keep it pushing too because what are we doing here? He never got a date after that. 
Now this one I hate because it feels so good in the beginning, but it's love bombing. And so basically it's when you feel this kind of like instant attraction to someone, they're so nice to you, maybe they're giving you gifts, compliments. It feels too good to be true. It usually is. That is like the scariest way to manipulate someone because you develop this like false sense of security with them and you start to think that things are moving much faster and it's really just meant to be but they're actually using that as a tactic to kind of control you you become like their little minion because naturally if someone's obsessed with you you want to kind of give them that same energy back if it feels right and so then you're giving it and it's genuine but theirs isn't and usually the guys who do this are narcissists and they're just trying to get like a rush trying to gas up their ego number six okay i'm sorry i did six forgive me i have so much to say but we're chatting it's okay if he's unhealthy i think health is wealth and at this point like there are so many ways you can be healthy that there's not really an excuse and i'm not talking about just physical health like mental health spiritual health i think if he parties all the time or smokes all the time that's usually an indicator of someone who kind of needs that like adrenaline rush and cheap thrill that's also an indicator of someone who later down the line might be more impulsive, which might lead to cheating or drunk driving or just making like dumb decisions in the moment that he has to clean up later. And we're not babysitting. So I think now I'm like, if he doesn't match my lifestyle spiritually, mentally, and like, does he go to therapy? Does he believe in therapy? Like that's such an important thing nowadays that should not be taken for granted or treated like a bonus. This question's not so much on the relationship side, but it's the relationship with yourself. So how do you find personal style? My mom's a stylist, so I grew up wearing crazy clothes. She would dress me in striped tights and I'd have a squirrel on my shirt and I was like, all right, let's go to school. Recently, I've tried to adapt other things into my style and I kind of analyze what I have in my closet already. And then I'll save photos on Instagram. Like if I see a, a girl wearing a cute outfit, I'll add it to a collection like style 2023. And then I'll look at all the things I have in that collection saved. And I'll do it on Pinterest too. Pinterest is like the goat when it comes to styling because they just have like a wider array of things and they actually label everything. So they'll be like, oh, this is classy glam or this is fairy core fairy grunge like there are so many different names for like the types of styles and like actual names that i didn't even know about so i'm like oh yeah okay i do like fairy grunge i had no idea that's what it was called but the drapey pieces it does look like a grungy fairy <laughs> like i guess it makes sense i'll save everything and then when i go shopping i'll reference that and see like what i either have in my closet already and i can pull from it and it doesn't even have to be the same exact thing. It can be in that family. Like maybe it's a white tank and I pull a blue tank or maybe it's a white tank and I pull a white blouse. It still kind of has that same energy to it. But yeah, that's how I would say I found my personal style is honestly just copying other people. Pull things from different people that you like. Like you don't have to copy it completely or you can if you like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The amount of times that I've gone on Instagram look through that folder and I'm like, I love this outfit. I'm wearing the exact same thing today. And of course it's not gonna wear the same because I'm a whole different person wearing it. Like my energy inside the outfit is not the same. All right, next question. How do you deal with a close friend liking the same guy? Ugh, this is the most annoying thing. Honestly, I've had this happen before. If you don't really care and you're just like, it's a guy like, I thought he was cute, but like if she's really obsessed with him, she can have him, let her have him, whatever. Or you can play let the best woman win. But I wouldn't really suggest that because then it's like either the guy chooses your friend and then you kind of feel rejected and it creates this like imbalance in your friendship. Like it's just not a good feeling. Like nobody likes feeling rejected. And then especially next to their best friend, it's just not a good feeling. Or the guy chooses you and your friend feels rejected. I just think either way, someone is getting rejected and I don't want that to happen to someone I love. I would rather have that happen to the guy. So in that instance, I'm like, why don't we both just friends on the guy and he can just 
go off on his merry way. Cause the, no guy I've met has been that important to the point where I'm like, oh, I actually, I, I really like him. Like, can you back off? I don't like the idea, like, especially if you call dibs on a guy or like, which dibs is so fucking stupid, honestly. But if you call dibs on a guy and then your friend's like, well, actually I've been talking to him or like just makes moves on him or makes advances on him that seem more flirty after you had just confided in her. That's not a good friend. Never let a guy come in between you and your friend. I promise it's not worth it. Okay, next question. I'm talking to this guy. He's really nice, but I'm not interested. How do I tell him I don't want him to keep texting me? Oh my gosh, I just had this happen recently. This guy kept texting me like multiple messages and inviting me places and I was just like, I was just not feeling it. Like I, I felt bad though because he was such a sweet guy, but I was just like, I have nothing in common with you other than we like to drink and have fun and laugh it's not gonna work like i was i just wasn't interested and i could tell that he was like emotionally unavailable also like he had just gotten out of a relationship not that long ago and i was just like this is not gonna work so i sent him this message and this is like a good template i think hi honestly i had a lot of fun hanging with you but i'd rather stay friends and vibe that way smiley face like the not emoji but like a smiley face just want to be transparent I'd love to still hang. So then that kind of puts the ball in his court. Like he can be like, no, I don't want friends. And then it's like, okay, bye. Or he can be like, okay, cool. I'd love to get to know you as a friend. He had a very good response to it. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. But yeah, that's what I would say. Cause I mean, you should never, never feel like a pressure to hang out with someone that you don't really vibe with. Romantically, I'm so picky about the people that I spend time with and i'm happy to have a bunch of friends that are guys but if i let you into my life as more than a friend and i'm not really like obsessed with it or like i don't like everything about you you don't check all my boxes i'm not wasting my time i'm not entertaining you next question how did you start training consistently and being healthy in general i honestly like i used to be so unhealthy especially when i first moved to miami i realized my body is my home it is so much easier to do chores in a home that's clean when you mop the floors and take out the trash weekly the house smells better hygiene eating clean working out became like a huge part of my life honestly after a tough breakup like I just feel like it was kind of a wake-up call for me that I wanted to take care of my body and make sure that I was cutting out the junk and then I got addicted to the feeling of my body running more efficiently because I felt like I could like wake up in the morning I would have energy and I wasn't depending on like caffeine and things like that as much I don't get me wrong I drink Celsius and I have matcha but I don't need it like I could go without it and I wouldn't get a headache but I also realized like I I don't know I've never really opened up about this but I used to have an eating disorder um in college I was actually 116 pounds which I'm five foot nine so for my height that was really skinny and I was eating like a spoonful of almond butter every day um because I was so so obsessed with being a model and I just wanted to be the skinniest I'd ever been this was like freshman year and I had to see a nutritionist for a while because I was severely underweight so I've struggled with like binge eating and then not eating at all and like yo-yo dieting I've realized <laughs> that I can still eat till I'm full as long as I eat like a lot of protein. Like protein fills me up and it'll keep me feeling full for a long time. So if I have like chicken or if I have eggs and like, I gotta be honest, like I really don't like eating chicken and I don't like eating eggs. Like I never crave them, but my body feels better when I'm eating that. So I'll add like something I like on top or I'll make like protein pancakes. Like I had that today with some chocolate chips. And I made it like fun and I was like, oh, it's like making pancakes when I was little. Like my dad used to make pancakes for us every morning. So I feel like that type of thing is really helpful because I always thought like I had to starve myself to be skinny and that's not the case. It's just 
swapping the foods for higher protein and you won't even want to eat as much and some vegetables you gotta have the vegetables in there okay next question i feel like nobody will fall in love with me i've never had a boyfriend and i'm 25 oh my gosh this just breaks my heart because i feel like i've been in that situation where you just feel so unlovable and i've i didn't love myself and that's why i felt so unlovable is because i did not love myself i gotta take a drink because this is a real moment <laughs> Life is so much about falling in love with yourself. And I know it sounds stupid. Like I used to really hate being alone. Like I would get really negative thoughts and I'd be super depressed. Like I would isolate myself and then I would think something was wrong with me because nobody wanted to hang out with me. But then I would be weird and have anxiety when I would hang out with people because I would be isolating myself for so long. But then I, I read something and like obviously I still have issues with this, but I read something and it said, nobody is going to believe in your dreams more than you do. And I think that's the truest thing. And when I read this, I immediately thought of that because if you don't believe in yourself, so this is the way this is worded, it kind of gives like, nobody's going to fall in love with me. Like you don't believe someone's going to fall in love with you, right? You've never had a boyfriend. It's focusing on the negatives. You don't believe that someone's going to fall in love with you. So it's not going to happen. You have to believe in what you want and what you want out of life more than anyone else. I am a firm believer that everyone does have a soulmate. I think it's also so much about timing and being open to that. Because if you're setting yourself up saying like, no, it's not going to work, but I guess let's go on this date then it's not gonna work because they're gonna feel that energy coming from you okay how do i speak to my friends about a problem without them getting hurt okay if it's a problem between the two of you i think it's good to be honest and open up maybe over like a wine night or something just make sure it's in person say like hey i've noticed this has been going on or i've been feeling this way i really value our friendship and i care about you a lot so i want to address this problem to make sure that I don't lose you as a friend and to make sure that we're checking in on each other because I think that's important and like your friend will respect you so much especially if you say like it, it's coming from love then they'll feel comfortable checking in with you if they feel something's off on your end but I think this is the best way to go about it just because a wine night like is for the girls like all the girls love getting together having a wine night and especially like it's just it adds a little lubrication a little liquid courage i think it's a great idea stress that you're not mad about the situation you just care about them and you value their friendship so you thought it was worth having a conversation how do you make friends as an adult slash how has it been making friends in LA? Making friends as an adult is probably the most awkward thing, especially because where I'm from, everyone knows everybody. So I never really had to make friends growing up. Like I never felt like I had to go out and make new friends. Like I was never meeting new people because everybody already knew each other. But I think it's cool to have the opportunity to get to know more people and learn about their culture and how they grew up and vice versa. The best places to meet people are probably coffee shops, fitness classes, like I go to Pure Bar all the time and just making friends like when you're alone. Cause people are so much more likely to come up to you if you're alone rather than with your friends. Like I know if I'm talking to someone, I'll come up to them alone. Like if they're with their girlfriend, I'm gonna feel a little intimidated, you know? Like it's just naturally easier to talk to someone if you guys are both one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and you already have something in common. Either you like the same coffee shop or you like the same bar class. You guys can start doing that together then. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, making friends in LA has been hard. I just feel like there's a lot of like just weird energy and people are looking for like a lot of benefits and like what can you do for me and like that's natural like that's normal obviously i want a friend that's going to benefit me and i benefit them at the same time but i think it's just taught me to spend more time with myself and not force things i feel like in the past like i just was like i need a bunch of friends i want a girl group i want this i want that and i'm like you don't need that like spend time alone I have two friends that I do nothing with. Like all the other friends I are like going out friends or whatever, but I have two friends that I can call if I need something or if I just wanna like watch a movie and have company. If that puts things in perspective, then there we go. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. It's real, it's true. Okay, last question and then we're canceling it out here. I broke up with the love of my life because he cheated. It's been a year and I can't move on. I have been there. 
I've been there. Girl, I love you, first of all. I'm so sorry that you're going through that. Um, I've also been cheated on and it fucking sucks, especially when you think that it's like the love of your life, but it's okay. The best advice I can give, don't rush things. Maybe you haven't taken time to really heal or process what you've been through. Getting cheated on makes you lose trust in everybody. And not just guys, it makes you lose trust in your friends, your family. Like it makes you literally not trust even yourself because you're like, how could I let myself fall into this trap? So it's the most humbling and exhausting experience and you have to like let yourself heal and let yourself understand and be gentle like have some compassion for yourself because it's genuinely a really hard thing to deal with but i think a lot of times when people cheat it's because of lack of communication so focus on the things you can control in this moment like focus on you know bossing up revamp your wardrobe do a little glow up practice your communication skills so then nobody else can one-up you in the future. Like figure out what you want in life because a lot of times like we become obsessed with people and their values don't even align or like they don't even want the same things out of their life that we do. And I think it just can become an attachment that's comfortable and it's not necessarily good. Like you and your partner should push each other to be better people and be better in your career. And you should feel like your best version of yourself when you're with them. And a guy who cheats his way through life, that's not a characteristic that you want to rub off on you ever. So praying for you, girl. I hope that you make it through that. I know that it's a really tough thing to go through. So I'm here for you. And that wraps up our girl talk. I had a little too much wine, baby. I've been having fun though. I really enjoy these. Like I actually really, really love doing these and I would love to get more questions. So if you guys have questions, you can DM me on Instagram personally, email me, write them in the comments. I do wanna say I'm so happy for everyone who speaks up about their problems because you are not alone. There are millions of girls that are going through the same thing and I'm here to make sure everyone feels included and part of this chapter of our lives, so. Love you guys.